June 5th, St. Felix of Nicosia, Confessor, First Order. Felix was born at Nicosia, Sicily, of poor parents. His father was a mender of shoes, but they were good, honest people who reared their children to be good Christians and useful persons. Their lessons were particularly well received by Felix. His heart was like soft wax in which the admonitions of his parents were deeply engraved. In a very special way, he loathed all lying and indecent speech. Out of veneration for the passion of Christ, he fasted, even as a boy, on the Fridays of March. In honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, he prayed the rosary every Saturday. When the boy was old enough, his father sent him as an apprentice to an able shoemaker. There, Felix distinguished himself by great modesty, docility, industry, and patience. When his companions joked about his seriousness and piety, he had a friendly answer for them in such a way that his good master took great pleasure in him. As he grew older, Felix realized how many dangers there were in the world for virtue. So when his parents died, he applied at the Capuchin convent at the age of 20 for admission. He was refused, but Felix persevered. <coughs> he prayed, waited, and at the opportune, and at opportune times, renewed his plea again and again. Finally, after eight years, he obtained the long-desired admission. On October 19, 1743, he was invested at Mistreta. Now Felix strove to be a true servant of God. His mind was continually set on God alone. He entertained a lowly estimate of himself and welcomed it if others slighted him. Austere as he was, he desired to undertake special works of penance in addition to those practiced in common. However, in obedience, he desisted from them. After his profession, Felix was sent to the friary of Nicosia, his native city, to assist the brother who gathered alms. He always showed himself very willing, gladly taking the greater portion of the burden on himself. He kept up that attitude even when he was an older brother. He did not trouble about his relatives and acquaintances in the city. He usually prayed while on his rounds, and in the friary he was happy if he could spend his free time before the Blessed Sacrament. There he was sometimes wrapped in ecstasy so that he was seen raised several feet above the ground. He was always ready for an assignment given to him in obedience. One time his superior said he should go to a certain artist and have a painting made of himself. Felix started out at once. Favored by God as he seemed to be, it was found well to subject him to the most extraordinary trials. But his virtue always proved to be genuine. He foretold future events, cured many sick persons by his prayers and the sign of the cross, and was sometimes found to be in more than one place at the same time. Felix had lived in the order in the greatest perfection for 24 years when God called him to eternal bliss. After receiving the last sacraments, he asked his superior to give him his blessing as a father and a priest before he departed this life. His superior tested his virtue even then and told him not to ask for the blessing until he had been told to depart. That evening, the physician came and felt his pulse, and there was no sign of life anymore, but Felix still lived. When the doctor expressed his astonishment, the guardian, deeply moved, said, Of course, he is waiting for the blessing. Stirred to the heart, the guardian gave him his blessing, and when he had said the words, Go forth, O Christian soul, in the commendation, he blessed him again. Then Felix called on the holy names of Jesus and Mary 
bowed his head and died. Devotion to him, which Pope Leo XIII publicly approved on February 12, 1888, began immediately after his death. He was canonized in 2005 by Benedict XVI. On the value of a blessing. Consider how highly blessed Felix esteemed the blessing of his superior. After receiving the last sacraments, he still asked for that blessing before his departure, and God Almighty miraculously preserved his life until he received it. To bless means to call down good things on anybody or anything. It is recorded of the early Christian period that Christians used to bless one another by way of greeting, by saying, God bless you. Thus we also bless ourselves by making the sign of the cross, from which all the blessings of the redeeming death of Christ come to us. We bless ourselves before prayer, before work, on entering and leaving the home, in danger and temptation, in order to be strengthened in doing good and to be preserved from evil. Do you bless yourself with devotion? Not making a motion with your hand, but raising your heart to God draws down blessing from above. Consider that a father's or a parent's blessing has a special power. God himself entrusts the care of the children to their parents, and therefore he readily confirms the benediction which parents pronounce over them. The father's blessing establishes the houses of the children, but the mother's curse roots up the foundation. Ecclesiastes 3.11 That being so, a pious mother will often and devoutly bless her little children. For that reason, too, grown-up children should be eager for the blessing of both parents. Jacob went to great lengths to get the blessing of his father Isaac. Esau cried out with grief when he had lost it through his own folly. Ruth experienced what good fortune came to her with the blessing of her mother-in-law Naomi. Therefore, Honor your father, that a blessing may come upon you. Ecclesiasticus 3, 9, 10. Consider that a very particular power is attached to the blessing of a priest. Already in the Old Testament, this was made manifest. Aaron stretched forth his hands to the people and blessed them. And the glory of the Lord appeared to all the multitude. Leviticus 9.22 At ordination, the Christian priest's hands are especially blessed with holy oil, while the bishop says, quote, By this holy anointing and through our blessing, O Lord, consecrate and sanctify these hands, so that everything they bless may be blessed. End quote. Hence, all the saints, as well as sincere Christians, have greatly esteemed the blessing of the priest. You receive his blessing at the close of Holy Mass, also when you enter the confessional, when you receive Holy Communion, and at other times. Receive it always with devotion and with the confidence of Saint Felix, so that through it the divine blessing may also come upon you, and you may one day behold the glory of the Lord. Prayer of the Church. O God, who dost gladden us with the annual commemoration of thy confessor Felix, mercifully grant that we who celebrate his entrance into heavenly glory may also imitate his actions through Christ our Lord. Saint Felix of Nicosia, pray, pray for us.